guys, welcome back to Kara's Cucina. I'm Kara DeFalco and I am so excited for my guest today. We have Mike Ham, host and producer of Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I am so psyched that you came to come cook with me today. I'm so psyched that you asked me because <laughs> literally no one's asked me to do that ever before. <laughs> so that's really cool. I'm really happy to be here. But you got like all like this cool stuff played out already. Yeah, yeah, I got you all set. Well, so, so you requested uh, pasta or linguine with clams. Yes, I did. Now tell me why this was your recipe for today. So you had asked for recipes like from childhood or whatever and I like was going back and forth on like a lot of different things and one thing that I always because you know, obviously I host a show all about Jersey right so like going down the shore over the summer like what do you get seafood type stuff what do people get down there and I was like what about linguine and clams I was going through some recipe books that I had and I landed on this one I was like why don't we try this and here we are and I think this is very a very Jersey dish for us to cook right now I think so I agree yeah so so we've got I got little neck clams which I, it's a little cold now but in the summertime we can get them out of the Barnegat Bay yep. um uh, I'm gonna go with just a shit ton of garlic. That's a metric unit of measure. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> White wine. We've got some good uh, Durham semolina pasta, a little lemon, butter and olive oil, and uh, salted water is on the stove coming to a boil. Amazing. So we'll turn this on and we'll get going. So Mike, tell me a little bit about the podcast. How did it start? Oh, the, you want the real story about how it started? Absolutely. Okay, so I started uh, podcasting in 2020 for my oh. full-time job. Uh, not this show. I had a different show that okay. I started out with. So that was about three years ago. Um, and I was interviewing like real estate professionals and other people in business and like all that kind of stuff. And after a while I started to get burned out talking about 1031 exchanges and real estate taxes. And it was just as, as exciting as it sounds. Yeah. So then I started interviewing other people like, you know, professional athletes and musicians and other podcasters that I knew. And I kind of got like the itch to do like different kinds of stuff. Like I was doing them all virtual for pe people all over the country. Right. And um, it was like uh, August, September of 2021. I was home, I had like a couple, I was a couple bourbons deep. <laughs> and I was like, what if I niche down something? I wasn't sure exactly what that looked like or what it would be. So I just started like writing stuff down. And like the next morning I woke up a little groggy and I was like, these are gonna be stupid notes. Right. But then I started reading through and I was like, this is actually can be something. This is good. Yeah, so like <laughs> I started like fleshing out the idea and then fast forward to October 2021 was when I launched the show. So we launched with, uh, um, Calandra's Bakery, nice. the Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown, and the Right Cut, which is owned by a guy who went to Rutgers, won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. He's a you know football player, all nice. that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then from there, we were just kind of like off to the races and crushing it. So we do still a lot of people in Jersey that are doing cool things and all that. So that is incredible, and I love. I feel like so many of our guests this season have been, um, you know, business owners of pandemic babies, basically, yeah. where like. You know, yeah. you started in pandemic. Prior to podcasting, what were you doing with yourself? Uh, so full time, which I still do. Okay. I sell uh, title insurance. Oh, okay. So I work in the real estate industry. Is that's why I was doing all that stuff and you know, uh, real estate taxes, real sense. estate professionals, and all that kind of stuff. Prior to so I've been doing that now for about five and a half years. Okay. Prior to that, I was a college baseball coach for five years. Wow. Um, so yeah, so I've had like a lot of different seasons had of life. multiple I feel like people in yeah. our age group have that you know kind of life story where yeah. like we've had multiple careers oh yeah. you know and like something it all kind of has like some sort of similar thread to it along the way but for the know. most I mean like, I guess sort yeah, of somewhere like you're like there's some <laughs> skill I have that College applies to, coach to, to uh, title insurance salesman I mean, to podcaster like the last little bit like you, there's like a clear yeah. reason why I did that yeah uh, but the beginning part is just kind of all over the place was it scary for you to to kind of launch this thing and be like, okay, like we're gonna, you know, do, do you get that sense of like, okay, I'm kind of putting myself out there and putting this idea out there, you know, I hope people like it. Um, not really. No. I mean, I had done the old show I did uh, over 140 episodes wow. of in, uh, a, no, actually all, close to 200 because it started like as a, a LinkedIn video series. I had 60 of those, about 140 Oof. of like the normal uh, podcast part. So it was like 200 episodes of that in two years. And then, so I had a lot of reps talking to people, just not a ton like in person the way that I do the show now. And you know, from there it was just, we're just gonna try something and if it clicks, it clicks and we'll run with it. And if it doesn't, who cares? We'll just kind of swipe that one out and then try something try else. Try something else. Yeah. I like that. I feel like that's such a good attitude to have. I think, I, you know, I, I know for me personally, like when I try something and I put it out there and it kind of flops, I get a little, you know, a little sad. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you want everything to work because obviously, like in your brain, it's in your like, brain, you're like this, this is, is a great idea. Amazing! Like everyone's gonna love this, and I love. I mean, 
Like, I'm just hungry, like, looking at this stuff. I know, but, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, once you put it out there, it's out there, you know? And if people like it, and the people that you want to be part of that community that you're building, right. like, that's the key, is, like, finding that community and giving them what they want. Mm -hmm. All right, Mike, we are ready to, uh, to get cooking. So if you want to throw some butter in there. Sure. We'll get that going with a little olive oil. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now we're hot. Sizzling. Let that swing around. And uh, garlic. Yeah. I'm gonna keep this lifted just a little bit so we don't burn our garlic. Never want to burn the garlic. And so then... is, it, is it like weird cooking with someone that doesn't really have like a cooking background? No, you know what? This is this is fun for me because okay. I. Um, this is great. I'm yeah. You drive. Well, and you you know what? No. And you're a little bit of a liar because you told me you do cook at a home. Bit, you yeah. do well. You do barbecue. Tell me. So tell me about your barbecue. Uh, so it was just something that I kind of like got into when I was actually working up in Rochester, New York. I was a college baseball coach up, coach up there. Okay. A buddy of mine had like this little smoker that we would play around with. Uh huh. And I just started doing that with him. And when I moved back to Jersey, I convinced my dad to get one. And then from there, Ooh. I just kind of you know started exploring different things and cooking ribs and pulled pork and all sorts of stuff in there. So it's a lot of fun. And in a barbecue competition with one of our former guests, uh, Matt James of Daddy Matty's in Madison, came in second, beat nice. Matt. Nice. No big deal. Nice. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, no big deal. No big deal. Who was, so we got our clams in here. We're going to let these uh, steam up a little bit. So I'm going to grab the lid. Yeah. Tell me about some of your favorite guests from your podcast. Like well, who true. really blew you out of the water? Um, you're asking me to pick between like my kids, basically. <laughs> um, so I would say we were just talking off mic before we started recording this. Um, the Seeing Eye was probably like the most, you know, uh, intense experience episode that I've had. Like walking blindfolded with one of the dogs and the head trainer, and kind of experiencing like what they do for, you know, people that need that service. Right. And they're like the premier Seeing Eye dog training center in, in the, the country. country. Yeah. Yeah. And like I live in Morristown, I always see them walking around. I'm like, how does the dog know? went across the street, which way they're going. Right. How, how do they know that? But then like learning and going through that whole process, like you learn a lot about it, you know, what it's all about and why it, why they do what they do and like the different cues the dog gives you to tell you like which way we're going or what's happening around you. Um, so that's been one, but th there's just been so many, like even just in Montclair, we've done a few. Um, here we've done uh, uh, dry goods refillery here in Montclair. Uh, they're like a plastic free grocery store. Oh. Um, yes, I, we, I know we've had somebody else in Montclair. It's hate that I can't remember it, but uh, but yeah, so many great episodes that like you just learn more about people's stories, and it makes you appreciate like kind of where they're at in their life, you know, with that business or that nonprofit or whatever, but that much more. Right. And do you you were also born and raised in New Jersey, right? Like That's this correct. is your yeah. you know yep. this is home. Yeah, I lived. I have not lived in Jersey. I'm 32. So I've not lived in Jersey for three of my 32 Two years. years of life. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 I think I was only gone for 15 months tops. That was it. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. Good. Yeah. Like we just don't. <laughs> right. We never it's like go you far. Think you're going to leave and then it just it it pulls, pulls you right back. back. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good reference for anybody that's paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, have you been surprised? Because I feel like I feel like New Jerseyans come in kind of like one of two veins where they're kind of like us and we're like. Yes, like Jersey proud, Jersey strong, and then yeah. people are like, "Ugh, New Jersey, like armpit of America, like why are we stuck here? High property taxes." Have you had a guest that surprised you that was like, "I can't believe this is still New Jersey." Uh, I believe it, this is still New Jersey. Like, like meaning like just something that like um, rubbed against a, a stereotype that you had or held about the state or, or the place at all that you were like, "Wow." No, I mean like honestly, I think and I think I'm answering your question correctly, but I, I think. <laughs> One of the things that I've noticed and why I love Jersey is the fact that it's so diverse. So you get so many different kinds of stories from so many different kinds of people. And growing up here, that I think that's what made me me. You know, like everyone here doesn't look the same. They don't come from the same background. They and they may live right next door. You know, like Mon, I mean, we're here in Montclair. This is a perfect example of oh, that. Oh yeah. Montclair is super diverse, both like demographically, geo, whatever, or not geo, because it's the same place. Um, <laughs> all those kinds, all those. You know, oh, those, those those ways yeah. that it can be diverse. Um, and so just like, you know, experiencing that and trying to get those experiences from all those people, like that's what I grew up around, you know, and that's what I that's what I really like. And so it's just like every new story is what really drives home the point that New Jersey is such a cool little oasis of, of people. Yeah, 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 I love that. And it really is. I mean, they're just, you know, we, they 
people look at New York as the melting pot, but really everybody who comes through New York winds up in New Jersey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and like New York, I mean, it is like, it's just, it's a city, right? Right. But then like the whole state itself, it, there's a lot more to New York that, you know, I mean, like I said, I lived in Rochester for a little bit and that's like a totally different world in totally and of different itself. Totally different place, yeah. Uh, but it's still part of New York. And so like they have to take those, those people in there too. But New Jersey's just a state and it's got all of that just all wrapped up from, you know, as far north as Mawa all the way down to like Cape May. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So what is, so we're, we're doing kind of a little bit of Jersey Shore here. Yeah. What are some of your favorite things to do around New Jersey? Like I know for me, I, I love that, you know, I, I mean, it's been a warm winter, but I love that I can go skiing in the winter. I can go to the beach in the summertime and everything in between, yeah. you know, in a, under a two hour ride. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I live in Morristown, so that's an easy place to do like a lot of stuff. Yes. I love coming here to Montclair because it's a great, another great spot that has a lot of great restaurants and whatever. A lot of my stuff revolves around food. Food. So that's fine. <laughs> um, and then Asbury Park is a place that I spend quite a bit of time in. I'm there basically like once a month. Nice. Um, even if just for like a day trip, because it's only an hour from here. Um, so I'll even, you know, off season, like I was just there a couple days ago recording episodes down there um, and just spent the night, went and got, you know, some dinner at some different places and kind of explored a little bit. Um, but that's one of my favorite places. My parents live up in Sparta also. Oh, so wow. Like a totally other, Whole other different part kind of, of the state. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to like shut off for a little bit and like be in peace and quiet, like that's fine. But I need, I need some stuff. You need stuff. You, you need know, things I need going some on. Action. <laughs> But like those are just all different kind of spots that like I go to. Um, but like you said, there's so many different things that you can do within such a short amount of driving distance. Driving time. distance, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So Mike, what are some of your favorite, you know, so we in the state love, uh, we love food. Yes. We love to argue about food. Mm -hmm. um, but we have some real like classic, Jersey classics. So like what are some of your favorite like Jersey classics? Oh, Taylor Megan cheese. Um, I would normally go like either a hard roll or an everything bagel uh -huh. with salt, pepper, and ketchup. Like that's that's definitely the way to go. Um, something like this. I mean, like my favorite thing is when I go down the shore. Like I'll only get seafood for like the entire time because it's it's right there. It's right there. You like you literally see like where they're bringing it in. Um, so like those are personally some of my favorites. And then there's obviously like restaurants that. I go to quite a bit when I go to the places that I go to. Right. You know, so like, like at Asbury Park, I got a few. In Morristown, I have a few. Here in Montclair, I have a few. Um, you know, but that's all comes with, you know, just exploring. Just exploring and yeah. going out. And seeing what you like. So what are some, tell me some of your go-tos in those places. Like what's your go-to in Asbury Park? Uh, so if I want to go like high end, I will go to Heirloom Kitchen at the St. Laurent, which is owned yes. by Dave Vienna, which yep. I think was just, NJ.com just said it was the best restaurant in the state. Yeah. Um, he's a former guest of mine. He's awesome. And like we went there a couple weeks ago, just like we did a day trip because it was super nice out. Yeah. And I texted him. I was like, hey, we're going to come in at like 530 because it was the only time we can get a res at like the bar. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, sure. So we like, you know, talked to us for a while and we just had this transcendent meal. It was like so good. Um, but so that's one place down there. And obviously, like, you know, I'm not dining at super high end establishments right, right. all the time. <laughs> You know, can't make that work. Uh, but there's so many different bit, different places. Like you can go like as you know, a divey, like a like Bond Street bar. Like that's another like cash only bar. It's kind of like off the beaten path a little bit down on Cookman. But there's like, down there, there's so many spots that I enjoy personally. Mm -hmm. But those are just a couple that stand out that I try to at least get to uh, once at least when I'm down there. While each you're down time. there, yeah. okay. What about Morristown? I mean, on Morristown's home, like. Yeah, uh, so Morristown, uh, I spend, this is not a food place, but I spend too much time at the Glenbrook Brewery in Morristown. Um, it's like a, it's been there for two years. I know this is gonna probably come out after this, but on Sunday, they're doing a chili cook-off and I'm gonna be like a celebrity judge of this <gasps> chili cook-off. Isn't that cook -off. so exciting when people ask you to do stuff yeah. like that? I'm, I'm like, yes. Yeah, like you wanna be a celebrity judge? I'm, I'm like, like, me? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I'm, is it because I'm here all the time? Is that why? But, yes. Um, yes, honestly. Uh, so the key to judging things like that, small bites. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just, I was just thinking about like the amount of chili I could potentially consume. I was invited once to judge a pizza competition and it was a lovely day and a really rough next day. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm, I'm already, I already have all I was like, plans. I was like, oh my God, the salt and the gluten is like, yeah, like I have agita already. Yeah. But yeah. Like the amount of heartburn I'm probably going to have yeah. by the end of this. So, yeah. And yeah. everyone was like, just take one bite. And I was like, how do you just take one? But I'm like housing yeah. spices. Like, how do you know if yeah. you're just gonna take one bite? You gotta like get the full. I'm like, I gotta get the whole thing. Like, yeah, thing. you're gonna be sick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, they were right. That plus beers is gonna be like. Oh a, yeah, a just hell of a day. 
Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Mike, let's check out our clams. Let's see if they're ready for uh, a little wine. They're opening up. They're uh, getting there. They're starting well. to. Yeah. We'll get some wine in there. Okay. Let them keep going. I did a little bit of white wine. Okay, you want to hear something? I don't know if this is, I think it's supposed to be white, white wine. Do I close it all the way? Yeah, yeah, right, we'll, we'll let them like steam up. Um, <laughs> you know when someone tells you something, this is gonna be so random and you can cut it out. No, 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 I love but, it. But uh, when someone tells you something, you just like accept it as fact and like you do it for forever. Like you just automatically do yes. it this way. So like one time we were making clams, like this is back, I, I might've been up in Rochester, I forget where I was. Okay. And we like, you know, you put the clams in like a pot with water so that they like rinse, get like all the sand yes. and shit out of there. I can say shit, right? Yeah. Okay, good. And so <laughs> Also he, like, streaming. Okay, <laughs> how you doing? Um, so he likes, the, my roommate sprinkled breadcrumbs on the top and he was like, it's because they're alive. So it, like when the, they'll eat them. And I was like, I never thought about that. And so now, and I don't even think that that's even a real thing because I, I mean, I know that they're alive technically, right? but like, that's still something that I do. That's like a weird thing. A weird. I, like, I'm pretty sure it's, it does nothing. <laughs> I, was I say, might look like a total idiot right now. I don't, I, really I, don't I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 98% sure it does nothing. I don't but think But it's the 2%. They, but it's the 2% that, no, that you're like, I'm going to Google that later. <laughs> yeah. I've never Googled it because I almost like don't want to know. You don't want to know. You're like, I'm just, just gonna wanna... keep adding breadcrumbs to my clams. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm committed to it. It's like it's either they're eating it or it's seasoning it. That it's one or the other. Yeah, it's got even be. though I don't think that that's a, it wouldn't do anything either. But you know, it's it's that's, fine. That's neither here nor there. That's why you're running a show that's about cooking and I'm just here. <laughs> as your and guest. you run a show about New Jersey. No, yeah. but but we absolutely love it. So we're gonna let those keep going. So what happens okay. with the clams is they open up. They're gonna release some of their liquid. It's gonna all come together, make a nice sauce. Yeah. And once our pasta cooks, we're gonna toss that all in. Uh, Awesome. Mike, oh, let me get your pot holder so you don't burn yourself. But oh, thank you. You want to check on those clams for me sure. real fast? And our pasta is almost ready to go. Oh, they look good. They do look they've good. They've all popped. All right. That's what we were waiting for. Yeah, that's the key. I'm going to cover it back up. Uh, yep, yeah, that can go right in the sink. Okay. Oh, this can go in the sink. The lid can go in the sink. Yeah, okay. not the, no, don't put the sauce in the sink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please, though. We'll leave those there, and I'm going to get this pasta drained. Do you have one of these pots at home, a multi-pot? No, have you ever I seen don't. That? This I just is, have a normal pot. Ready? This is going to be... I'll take this off and bring it forward so you guys can see it. <clears throat> this is my favorite thing about these pots, is the strainer's right inside. Oh, I love that. So you never toss the pasta water. Oh. I love... That's a, such a great idea. It's, um, it's probably one of the best kitchen investments you'll ever make. Yeah. And get a little pasta water in there. Get these guys in there. This is what I like about this recipe too. It's just like dump in, in pot. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it's key. exactly it. And we'll get this all tossed together. It smells so good in here. It does. Do they have a smell version? No, I'm still working on the whole smell vision thing. I That'd gotta, be cool. I gotta figure it out. Absolutely. All right, Mike, I'm gonna have you put a little chopped fresh parsley in there. Sure. I'm gonna grab my. Lemon zest, right? Oh yeah. Does lemon zest really do anything? Absolutely. Okay. Smell. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm in. <laughs> I like it. I love lemon on fish. Oh that, yeah, to I agree. me, that's that's like the quintessential yeah. right there. Yeah. It's just like the zest, because like you know you like a peel, it's gonna be gross. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, my friend? I think we gotta plate this up and take a taste, right? I think so. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but my stomach is your stomach. Is, your stomach, stomach is, is this your literally. lunch today? <laughs> yeah, honestly, it is. Wait, so while you're plating this, can yes. I ask you a question? Absolutely. Do people normally ask you questions on this? No, not usually. Right, no, good. so I'm excited. All right, flip the script a little bit. Yeah. So you were asking me like all your or my favorite spots uh -huh. in like Jersey, like where to go and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Like, do you have a couple that are your go-tos? Maybe even here in like Montclair because you live here? For really good Italian. Like the only time I'll go out for Italian. Right. Uh, Palazzone 1960 in Wayne. Have you gone oh, over there yet? No, I have not. So they only do lunch. They don't do a dinner service, but they do a lunch service that is, and their pastries are out of control. Everything's made in house. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's, that is definitely my go-to. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it came out so good. Well done. Mm. Yeah. You didn't even have a recipe out in front, but that's why I like cooking because it's like a lot of happy accidents sometimes. Absolutely. It doesn't even matter. That's the best part about them. That's why I don't do a lot of baking. When Me people neither. come in, like they, I'm like, baking's yeah. way too precise. Like I need to just be able to throw things in a pot and see how it turns out. Yeah, well, this <laughs> came out great. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Mike, what's next for the podcast? What do you have, what do you have uh, coming up as we, in the next few months Ooh. at least? Um, we got uh, obviously like a lot more cool guests coming up. Um, there's some other things that I'm working on that might be like taking what we do um, and kind of expanding it. I'm not gonna like say what it is. Okay. But I'll have to watch and see or yeah. listen and see. Uh, but more like maybe focusing more on like towns themselves and okay. then like getting like a little group together and kind of going down there and shooting it more. I'm literally just telling you what it is. But <laughs> shooting like a little bit more professionally, a little bit more organic conversation, just talking about like different towns in New Jersey and like what's going on there and all that kind of stuff and try to like keep bringing awareness to what's cool here and like what people like people appreciate what's in their backyard like that much more so we're gonna keep you know throwing stuff against the wall seeing what sticks <laughs> and you know whatever people like we'll just keep doing that so there you yeah. go where can folks find the podcast uh greetings from the garden state.com is the hub for all things of what we do so you can get to every episode that we've ever had on there our social channels you can get through there um greetings from the garden state on instagram is like my main social media platform we have all them all but yes. that's the main one yeah um, and then we're available to listen on apple spotify google podcasts wherever you listen to podcasts you can get the show amazing mike i've had so much fun with you Me too. I, you're so, I, I love jersey people i just yeah. there's there's something there's a brotherhood here for as that's, diverse as this yeah. state is i totally there agree. is you know and everywhere you go do you ever go to like a vacation somewhere like to aruba and all this like you're walking along the beach and that accent you yeah. can't miss. You're like, like Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, right. Yeah, it happens all the time. Everywhere we go, yeah. <laughs> I find somebody. It's, it's amazing because it's such a small state too. It really is. Yeah. It really is. And, and like I said, so thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for, for, for cooking with me. I so appreciate it yeah. and sharing about the podcast. So once again, guys, podcast is greetings from the Garden State. You'll find this recipe over at CarrieDeFalco.com and you can follow me, Facebook and Instagram at CarrieDeFalco. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button on YouTube so you never miss the next delicious episode. That is it for this week, Mike. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Bon appetit. Thank you all.